on the spirit of Amendment 20. Ask for a no vote. The question is Senator Carroll. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, one, to be clear that the uh, Constitutional Amendment 20 does include the word dispense on it. Um, the more important part on Amendment 141 is no one who has come up here to speak against this amendment can tell me where in this language that is expressly granting this right on medical marijuana where we are authorizing anyone to do a ban. It's not authorized. So to the extent we do it or attempt to do it, I think realistically it can and will be stricken down legally. Um, so this is a chance to fix that. I think the other point that Senator Cadman was making is we may all remember um, Immanuel Kant's categorical imperative, right? It's your universal here. If one city can do it, all cities can do it. You have no more Amendment 20. And Amendment 20 doesn't authorize that. So just think about the consequences of that. You carry it on the way out. You have essentially created the process where ignoring the plain language of what's in the Constitution, if, if all did what one did, there is no more Amendment 20. Um, I ask for an I vote on L0141. Senator Johnston. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I would respectfully ask for an, a no vote on this amendment. Um, I agree with Senator Kopp that what, what's clear in the constitutional language is what is what is required by Amendment 20 is that people have access to medical marijuana if they were found to have debilitating or chronic medical illnesses. Access to medical marijuana. And that that marijuana can be dispensed to them. There is nothing in any part of the language that requires that there be a dispensary or a dispensary model by which they access that. There, th this amendment not passing would change nothing about, the way th about someone's ability to access that constitutional right. It would be no different than saying that, that by... Uh, stores doing, by cities doing regulations on big box stores versus other types of stores as ways to buy books would mean some sort of First Amendment infringement that Senator Mitchell is describing. All we're saying here is that cities have the ability to regulate how they choose for this to be dispensed with. There is no change to the dispensing, which is the key word that Senator Carroll identified in, this, in the statute. It does, in fact, require that it can be dispensed. It can be dispensed by a caregiver, as the Constitution uh, originally uh, anticipated. And so I think this is a reasonable ability for, for towns and cities and counties to have control over their own regulations on how this is distributed. I think it's fair. I ask for a no vote on this amendment. Senator Mitchell. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Do my ears deceive me? Did I hear the Yale scholar argue that the constitutional provision authorizes that a patient be dispensed marijuana but does not authorize that someone actually dispense it? Does it, does it suggest that there is a need for medical marijuana, but governments at all levels can regulate and even prohibit the only realistic model for producing and providing that marijuana? If the provision means anything, it means that the product can be supplied as well as consumed. Perhaps the drafters weren't foresightful enough to contemplate what it would take realistically to provide the product, but stomping the supply out of existence is completely unfaithful to the constitutional policy of allowing its dispensing to patients. Vote yes on this amendment. Question is, okay, the question is the adoption of, of amendment 141. Division has been requested. Those who are not eligible to vote, please, everyone in the chamber, please be seated. And those in favor, please rise. Uh, please be seated. Those opposed, please rise. <laughs> Chair is not in doubt. The amendment fails. Senator Morris. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move the committee rise report, beg leave to sit again at 1.30. Members, committees upon adjournment are going to meet here in just a few minutes. Uh, this afternoon's committees will have to be pushed back to upon this afternoon's adjournment when we're done with this bill. So again, Madam Chair, I move that the committee rise, report progress, beg leave to sit again at 1.30. You heard the motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. 
Motion is carried. The committee will rise to report progress and uh, sit again at 1.30. So I'll come back to order. Announcements. Committee will come to order. The coat rule is relaxed and for the sergeants and staff as well. Senator Romer. Mr. McGowan, please read Amendment 142. Amendment 142 to House Bill 1284 for Senator Carroll. Amendment Bill page 22. Carol. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move Amendment 142. Um, and ask for an I vote. <laughs> uh, this, <laughs> this actually, uh, the bill has a fairly broad sweeping of um, what can be permanent prohibitions on license for a variety of criminal charges. Uh, what Senate, uh, what Amendment 142 does is it limits um, it to uh, f felony drug convictions in the last five years would disqualify you from your license. Um, which I think is, you know, an appropriate time limit and um, has an appropriate nexus to what we're regulating and ask for an I vote of 142. Seeing no further discussion, the uh, <laughs> Senator Spence. Oh, this is a no vote, members. <laughs> um, this is... Uh, this is a no vote from the uh, Senator that uh, does not support organized crime to say no. Question is the adoption of Amendment 142. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. No. The amendment fails. Um, Mr. McGowan, please read Amendment 166. Amendment 166 to House Bill 1284 by Senator Renfro. Amendment Rear Ghost Bill page three strike at Senator Renfro. Lines. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move Amendment 166. Members, We've heard a lot of discussions on other amendments about this is the thing to do to constitutionally be within our limits and, and, uh, and to honor the, the, the will of the people with their vote in 2000. Well, this is an amendment to, to that end. What this amendment does is, is it strikes a majority of the bill and it will be a definition of caregiver. What a caregiver is, and what a caregiver is not. And then what it also does is it would allow, allow the cities or the, the counties to opt in or opt out of medical marijuana programs just like the current bill does. So it would be stripping quite a bit of the bill and changing it over to what the voters voted on in 2000 and to put it back to that level. Recently, within the last, within a, in March, Director Kurlikowski, he's the Obama drug czar, he spoke in California at a conference, and this is what he said about medical marijuana. He said, the scope of our country's drug problem is disturbingly clear. Drug or overdoses outnumber gunshot deaths in America and are fast approaching motor vehicle crashes as the leading cause of accidental death. Now that wasn't just marijuana, that was drug the drug problem overall. It's hard to believe that since we hear so much, we hear so much more about H1N1, Toyota recalls, and texting while driving than we do about the drug problem that we have. The director continued on, he said, you, you all know the impacts of marijuana in this state. He was speaking in California, which is the model that we're following with this bill. He said, from the proliferation of marijuana being grown on public lands and indoor grows to the negative effects of marijuana use among youth. The increasing influence of violent gangs on the marijuana trade and the problems associated with marijuana dispensaries. Barack Obama's drug czar just spoke within the last two months about the problems associated with dispensaries. <laughs> 